Yes, you, watching this video. Do you want to own a piece of scribbler? Only not a lock of hair or blood or flesh or anything else that will get you in trouble with the law? Well, now you can, with t-shirts, hoodies, tote bags and mugs featuring Obab Scribbler at her Teespring store. You know you want to. I shall now stop talking in third person and send you onto the video. Be lovely to each other and enjoy the show. Tuesday. Dear Celestia, I have so much to get done. The work is coming out of my ears. Early as always, I was up, looking forward to a nice breakfast from Spike as usual. But there was nothing today. I went upstairs and Spike was still asleep. Just imagine my surprise. He said something or other about not feeling well, but he should know me better by now. I'm not buying it. He's just trying to worm his way out of his chores. He's probably just tired. But I did tell him not to eat so many of Pinky's sugar cookies right before bed. Wednesday. Without Spike's help, things have been running very slow. He hasn't been doing any of his chores, and I could barely get him out of bed this morning. I've heard a few complaints about a stomach ache, but it's nothing a little herbal brew that Sakura can stir up can't fix. I'm sure he'll be up and going in no time. Thursday. He's hardly sleeping anymore. Turning and twisting all night, groaning in his sleep. Sometimes he jolts out of bed in a cold sweat, trembling and pale as a sheet. I've tried to comfort him. Luna can count how many times I've tucked the poor little guy back in his bed. But he won't catch any more than a couple of hours a night. To be honest, I am getting a little worried. Spike's had colds before. Everyone gets sick growing up, but not like this. I haven't told any of the others. I don't want them to worry too. And besides, I'm sure he'll get better soon. I hope. Saturday. I'm contemplating writing a letter to Princess Celestia. Spike's condition seems like more than just a cold, and I've not read about anything like it. With each day that passes, I get more and more worried about him. The fact that he's progressing from bad to worse with every hour is eating away at me. I should have listened to him at the start. Sunday. Spike didn't come down at all today. Fluttershy has been here for a little while, helping me take care of him. She's always connected with him in a different way than I did and I can see in her face that she's just as worried as I am. She's calling me right now. I guess it's time to bring up Spike's dinner. I want to help as much as I can. I want to be there for Spike all the time. But every time I enter the room now, it feels like the plague. He's shivering and cold, and I don't think there's a blanket thick enough to wrap him in. I'm sending a letter to Princess Celestia in the morning, and I hope she has a way to take Spike away from all this. He doesn't deserve it. Tuesday. The mail came in today. It would have been much faster if Spike was able to receive it, but in his state, being able to receive any letters is out of the question. Princess Celestia explained everything. They call it the equine influenza, and although I could hardly see the letter through the thick beads of sorrow welling up in my eyes, I read on. Ponies could be cured, but no one has ever heard of the case in a dragon. I cringed at the thought. I needed a moment to process that Spike had caught something that may not be able to be fixed. <clears throat> As I read on, I realized... It was my fault. I shouldn't have taken him to live with me. His dragon immune system couldn't handle it. I should have known. I should have researched. I should have figured this out. I'd like to believe that I can cure him. But the more I read on, the more my illusion faded. It was me. I know it was me. I kept him here. Selfishly, heartlessly. 
and now he lies on what might be the deathbed I built for him. Thursday. I can still see their faces. The horror, the grief, the blame that I know is there. I saw them. Rainbow Dash, Pinkie Pie, and all the others. But I couldn't feel them, any of them. They can't possibly know what it's like. I can't enter his room anymore. I can't bear to see him without wanting to break into tears. I want to be with him all the time, listen to every one of his heartbeats, and I wish, I so wish that I could. All my organization, everything is in there. The dreaded plagued room with Spike. I don't know what day it is anymore. The sun and moon have started to blur, and I can't tell one minute from the next. I've become numb. Hard. Cold. I no longer feel the ache as my heart breaks over and over. I want to take him away from here, away from the things that are causing him to suffer. And I don't ever want to come back. They come over every day now, and I wish they wouldn't. I don't need anyone here. I don't need one single other pony to tell me that it wasn't my fault. Because it was. It is my fault that I can't bring him back to me. I don't sleep anymore. I can't give another minute to anything else. I got over myself, and now I spend hours next to him, just watching his chest rise and fall. Every breath a gift he gives to me, reminding me that soon I'll never see another. He spoke today, for the first time in days. He can hardly get out a single wheeze. That laughing baby dragon I once knew, and he wasted one of his last breaths on telling me that he loves me. If only he knew. I am so tired. So tired of tears. So tired of blinking blurry and struggling to read what's on these smeared pages. But I owe them to him. I owe every tear to Spike. I should have let him go back to the dragon lens. I shouldn't have kept him with me. I remember holding him as a hatchling. A memory I wish now I could forget. I remember carrying him. I remember his height, his weight. How he looked at me like I was his mother, with giant wide eyes. I remember the decision to keep him. I remember the choices I had to let him go to the dragons, where I know now he belonged. I think I've always known. I was selfish, so selfish, and now he's paying for my crimes against him with every labored, numbered breath. I want to take him, wrap him up like the tiny thing he once was, and promise him that everything's going to be alright, just like I used to. Even if it won't. He isn't the same. I can see it in his eyes. They're dark, lifeless. He's been through more than anyone ever should. He's given up. Tonight, he closed his eyes for the final time. It's been three weeks. Three weeks that may as well have been three years. A lifetime. An eternity. Sometimes I still call for him. I expect him to come, face bright, as excited as he always was, before I remember. It hurts so much. But I have no more tears to give him. I should have given him everything. I miss him. I miss him so much. I love him with everything I have. Every breath. Every heartbeat. 
every tear. Good night, Spike.